I'm going to call this video Attracting Miracles. It's probably not the right word. Well, inviting Miracles. Yeah, Inviting mm, Miracles. Yeah. Inviting Miracles. So <clears throat> I would say that the invitation of the miraculous into one's life is a directly correlated to uh, the release of uh, thought identification. So the less there is uh, thought and body identification, the more, the greater is the miraculous experienced in life. And um, I think one of the things which has really, really helped me, and uh, Dr. Hawkins, one of my spiritual teachers, mentioned it uh, from the Course in Miracles, was that one of the first lessons in A Course in Miracles, which is along the lines of, all my thoughts are meaningless, my thoughts are meaningless, is spiritual genius. Because it means, the way it's stated is it's like, it doesn't say like most of my thoughts are meaningless. Uh, or it doesn't say like, uh, generally thoughts are meaningless, but in this area you should really have meaningful thoughts. So it says like every single thought is equally meaningless. Or it would be against the idea that there could be such a thing as a special thought that you should keep hold of in case of emergency. You see, because <laughs> that's, 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 that's the ego. It's like, okay, like uh, these prob. You know, it's like, well, you know, I'm going to hand over my all my problems at work. I don't want those. Those are meaningless thoughts. Um, I'm going to like hand over all my problems with my family because those. But uh, you know, but in terms of like, um, in terms of uh, like watching Netflix, that's important. You see. That's, that's, that, that can't be made meaningless. My thoughts about wanting to know what's the next episode of Netflix is special. So everything else can go, but we have to retain Netflix thoughts, you see. So that's how the ego goes. So that's how the ego survives by having, wanting to get rid of the things it doesn't want. It wants to hold thoughts which it thinks are special. And actually, The Course in Miracles is saying that there is no such thing. All thoughts are equally meaningless. And this is like, so this means the text is at the level of enlightenment. It means that you can let go of needing any thoughts. Um, and why is that important? Is because um, through my own spiritual practice, like if you go to the observer of thoughts, to be in the witnessing or the observer of thoughts, then you realize that um, you lose being in the witnesser or the observer or the non-dual field as soon as any thought is identified with. If any single thought is identified, and what happens when you're doing your spiritual work is the thoughts that pull you out of spiritual states, high spiritual states, are meaningful thoughts. It's not the meaningless thoughts. Meaningless thoughts don't pull you out of being in bliss, or being in oneness, or being in ecstasy. It's not meaningless thoughts. So like, the, the grass is green. That's not going to take someone out of, uh, out of uh, Satchitananda, or out of bliss. But like, uh, I forgot to pay the mortgage. If that thought comes up, then it's like suddenly, you know, someone, someone loses their bliss, you know, suddenly that thought. But why is that thought like, I need to pay my mortgage and the grass is green? Like, the grass is green doesn't affect a spiritual student. And yet I forgot to pay the mortgage. It usually affects a lot of spiritual students until they're able to know that all thoughts, and they're not able to hook into any thought as being um, meaningful. The emotion that creates. It's, uh, I would say the emotion, the emotion, so the emotion is more like the level of repressed feelings. So if there's a lot of repressed feelings, one tends to have a fear-based emotion a lot of the time. And then when you have a lot of fear-based emotion, you tend to have a lot of, uh, you're trapped. It's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a vibrational field where you trapped fear-based thoughts all the time. So if you've got too many repressed emotions, the, jet, the, the predominant emotion is fear, and you tend to pick up from radio fear in the collective ether, like all, most of your thoughts tend to be fear-based. And as you do more spiritual work, you go to like uh, uh, radio, uh, radio, uh, radio, what's that, pride. Radio pride, so you tend to get a lot of prideful thoughts. And as you go, you go to more peaceful and less thoughts. So as you do, as you clear, allow your repressed feelings to come up, the dominant, the dominant emotions and the thoughts that you tend to identify Thing. Like someone who's in bliss and in a Zen mood doesn't tend to have like uh, very fear, he doesn't have fear thoughts. It's like when you've got a lot of identification with the body and you're feeling very limited, then you get a lot of negative. The thoughts become quicker 
and more negative, the more you're identified with the body and your repressed emotions. So the thing that I realized was that actually you don't need any thoughts. And being in the observer, when you're in good states, it's always the first special thought that pulls you out. The first thing you identify with will take you out of the observer or, or a high spiritual state. So it's just to understand that thinking is not useful. Any identification, identification with the body is not useful, identification with thoughts, identification with time, identification with whatever it is. Because the more you identify, the more you hook in, the, the, the worse you feel, the more contracted and separated you start to feel as you, as you go down the levels of consciousness. So this was really, really helpful. When I was seeing Muji, um, it would be obvious that uh, Muji would like to ask people, like, go into the observer of this, and then they'd, they'd be in states of bliss. They'd be blissed out in the room, and then suddenly this thought would come, and they'd say, but, but the observer doesn't work for this. And, he, and Muji would just say, well, that's just a thought. You just picked up a thought, you see. It's not that that thought was a special... It was just that they made that, that thought was a special thought. It doesn't really matter what the thought is, you see. So I just wanted to say that, you know, that when you're doing advanced spiritual work, especially if you're pursuing to being in the timeless oneness or to be enlightened, then, you know, thoughts are not your friend. Friends, okay. <clears throat>